Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna, and this is a podcast about knitting. Today is Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. I'm coming to you from the Manassas area of Virginia in the U.S. And welcome if you've not stopped in before. I hope today you'll see something that you enjoy. And if you're coming back again, thank you so very much. I always do a little clip right before I start just to make sure that everything's working right and there's a noise that's coming through as I record that sounds maybe like air or water running someplace. In actuality, there's nothing going on here, but I hear it on the video, so I hope that that's not distracting. I honestly don't know any way to change it, and I don't know why it's doing it. So let's get started, and I will try to talk as loud as I can so that I'll be talking over that. I have some finished objects today. I have some things that I'm working on, one thing that I'm planning for the future, and our fiber-related children's literature book. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I have today is a pair of finished socks. These socks were made with yarn but from mustache yarns. It was in the colorway called Ralph, which is a mouse and the motorcycle reference. This is what I have left over. This particular yarn comes in two skeins and they're perfectly set up so that you can have a matching pair of socks. And these are my finished socks. I put a very short one by one rib at the top. I knit the socks with um, a German short row heel. I used Mina Phillips pattern where there is an adjustment for a high arch here. It's a mini gusset and I like that mini gusset a lot. This is a German short row heel which I'm not a fan of myself. I see them on other people's socks and they look beautiful but something about my execution of that German short row wrap and turn of sorts does not look good to me. I might try another short row heel. I have done the fish lips kiss heel before, but I really wanna include this adjustment because that makes it actually fit. I have a very high arch and these fit fine with that adjustment. So these are my finished uh, mouse in the motorcycle or Ralph socks. The next thing that I have is also a pair of socks. I am participating in the Desert Vista Dye Works fifth annual sock challenge or something like that. I will, things um, are below the video. If you are ever looking, it's, there's a little down bar. It has an upside or a little V or a little arrow pointing down. If you click that, I Put show notes there. If I don't have time to do the show notes, I never go back and add it later because it just has to happen when everything else happens. And I apologize for that, but sometimes it's a choice of a podcast without show notes or no podcast because they are time consuming and there are times I just don't have that time. These are my finished socks for March. They are in the icebreakers colorway. This is what I had left over. I knit them separately, just as I did the mouse and the motorcycle socks, just one at a time is what I mean. These, I put a two by two rib, I did a heel flap and gusset, and I did a rounded toe, I believe. It might, have, yes, it's a rounded toe. That's also from Mina Phillips' vanilla sock pattern. That might not be the exact name, but I will link it for you. It's a great pattern. It's very inexpensive and she gives a lot of pictures. She gives a lot of pictures that help you execute things and I believe there are even some videos you can go and watch. In fact, I'm almost positive that there are. It's been a long time since I watched them, but when I did first buy the pattern, I did watch those video tutorials that are part of linked through the pattern. So it's it's really inexpensive. It's a great deal if you are wanting to try something different that you haven't tried before. Okay, so that's my second finished object. The next finished object that I have is the hydrogen shawl. And this is a free pattern. You'll see, I, I write on 
my, my patterns all the time, so they end up being trash when I'm done. This is from Gage Dye Works, and I did use the Gay Di Gage Dye Works yarn. All right, here's the tag. This color is called Concrete and Tulips. It is an MCN fingering weight yarn. It's 70% superwash merino wool, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon, and this skein had 170 grams or 548 meters. This is what I have left over. They give specific directions on how to know when to stop. You just go till your yarn runs out. There's two ends to weave in, the beginning and the end. And if you time it right, you're going to end up, I maybe this is seven yards, which I don't think would have allowed me another repeat at the end. It is a triangular shawl. Begins here with the gray is the concrete, and then the tulips are the different colors. So there's purple and pink, and then a salmon color or terracotta, an orange, a yellow, a springy yellow green, uh, another green, another green, and then more of a probably Kelly green to blue. And then the end has garter stitch so it doesn't roll. And let's, oh, my watch band just caught there. You can see I did um, block it aggressively because you can see through it there. And I don't recall the measurements right now, but I do keep project pages on Ravelry for all of my projects. And typically on shawls, I do write the dimensions down. If I haven't, I will measure it again and go ahead and put those measurements down there for this would be the large size. I believe this skein can be purchased the shorter yardage or less yardage. So instead of 170 grams, it's probably 100. Maybe, maybe I'm I'm not sure. But anyway, there are you can do two different sizes. So this would be the larger of the two sizes. Just used all the yarn that came in it. It it was beautiful to knit with, and it is so light and soft, and the drape is excellent. I imagine that has to do somewhat with that cashmere in there. So very, very nice shawl. I really like the finished object. I'll Hopefully I've thrown some pictures on here. If I didn't, there are pictures on my Ravelry project page. As I had mentioned, I always do keep those. I think that's all. Just double check. No, it isn't all I have for finished objects, but the others are just a few more dishcloths. I am participating with the Yarn Hoarders dish cloth challenge for this year, which is just whatever you want to make it. I want to make it to use up as much of my cotton yarn as I can and to have some things, uh, dish cloths for gifts. I'm using one pattern because I just decided I've learned it and it's a dish cloth. So I've made lots and lots of pretty ones and fancy stitches and all, but these go quickly and they're just equally functional. I just finished this one this morning and you know, they are square. I add this little crocheted hook or handle or tag or words escape me right now, but I am adding these now. This, all the ones today are Lily Sugar and Cream Yarn from my stash. This color is covered up save the little bit left over. These skeins come in some of the oddest, they're not odd from the ounce point of view, but I'm used to looking at grams. So this is a 56.7 gram skein, approximately 95 yards, and that's what's left over from making one dishcloth. So really for me, I don't need one that's a larger skein than that, but sometimes that's all I can find. So then there's just more waste or See, the name of the color is Cool Breeze Ombre. So as you can see, it's variegated with four colors, white, pale yellow, um, a medium kind of blue, and a green. So that's the first one. And then I finished some solid color ones. They're very bright. I have a friend who I made dish cloths for quite a few years ago, and she mentioned that they're pretty much gone. She likes bright colors, so I've done quite a few in bright colors. I've got a, what I call a lime green, pink, and blue. 
but I'll tell you what they are. It's hot blue, and this is what, see, this is the skein that is a little larger. It is 2.5 ounces or 70.9 grams. So that's a lot of leftover, but it's not enough to make another dishcloth. I also did one in pink from a different size skein. Again, this is hot pink, and this skein has four ounces or 113 grams, so I could get two out of this one. You need it close to two. I'm needing close to two ounces. And the green was, is hot green. I call it lime green. So I'm gonna add this with a couple of others that I had shown before and have a gift for my friend of some new dishcloths for her. That's all I have in finished objects. Let's go on to some things that I'm working on right now. The first thing I'm working on is a pair of socks that are from Knitterly Things Yarn. And I got these in this sock bag, which I use a lot. And I did show it, uh, maybe not, not last podcast, maybe the one before that. And I had mentioned it's Whimsy Stitches and they are on Etsy. But I did not, that time I did not have time for show notes. And I had a couple of people say, hey, I've looked for it. I can't find it. I've tried everything I can to find it. And it's the spelling. That's the reason. Etsy is so particular. I never use their search anymore. I use Google because it'll get you right there. But here is their tag. So let me show you. It's W-H-I-M-Z-E-E -E, stitches dot etsy dot com and that's all one word so it's just the way that they did a cute spelling of the word whimsy but not the typical spelling which makes it really hard so anyway that's the bag I'm using and I did want to clarify that in case there was anyone else out there having the same issue the socks that I am knitting are from this skein self striping I'm just kind of stuck on self-striping. And this is Vesper Sock Yarn from Knitterly Things. And the color is called Absolute Rainbow. And it did come with a mini skein of black. But there's some places you'll see. Maybe you can see there some little spots that are gray. So it's not a totally black skein. And here I'm almost done with the first sock. So I put black or, you know, that tonal whatever you want to say and I started with this orange because it was the first color that was just came right off of it. it the repeat goes to here so there's two colors of orange there so there's the lighter color and there's the darker one so that's one repeat I did over two repeats but not quite stopped put my afterthought heel in it was a true afterthought heel it's just like a wedge toe and tried it on and this is where I need to be to start my toe which I'm going to do in the black and just hope for the best that there's enough yarn since I didn't do as usual I didn't do much of a cuff I hope that there will be enough and I, I think there will be but it needs a toe and then heel cuffs and toes out of this I should weigh it but probably too late now so that is, I'm calling Rainbow Sock. And I probably have changed the name because I think I did something else once called Rainbow Socks. I haven't started the second one at all. That's my first work in progress. My second one is a shawl that I mentioned last podcast or maybe the one before that. And this is the cutest name for a shawl, but for the life of me, I can never remember the name of it. It's Take the Chill Off Shawl. And the picture's not great there. I saw uh, I saw this in Colorful Yarns out at, when I was in Colorado. It was a sample in the shop, and I could just see it so much better. And if I hadn't seen it, uh, well, as I, if my mother hadn't seen it, I wouldn't be knitting it. But seeing the sample is just so gorgeous. But from here, I think it's hard to tell what it looks like, and there's not another picture. If you go on and look at the project pages, there might be in the 30-something projects shown. There are a few that show the front 
because it's more of a poncho. It's you, you're going to take one in and sew it to the other side and it's going to hang on your shoulders that way, which is one thing my mother liked was that it would stay on. She also liked how long it was in the back. So I want to be, there's two sizes listed here. I want to be sure and do the, I am doing the larger one, which takes three skeins of this yarn. And it is a fingering weight yarn. I have finished one repeat, maybe one and a half repeats. This is what the yarn looks like in the cake. And here's what it looks like in the skein. This is from Alexandra's Crafts. It is, she's an indie dyer, and it's from Silverton, Oregon. www.alexandracrafts.com. This colorway is Twilight Purple Rain Variegated. So I think it must be, this is Purple Rain, and this is Twilight, and it's variegated with those two. It is 80% superwash merino, 20% silk. Very nice to knit with. I'm enjoying the yarn as I knit. I love yarns like this that have those pops of color. It's just kind of fun to knit along. As you knit this, you're knitting it, of course you're knitting it this way, but it's going to go this way. So this is gonna be the top part and then the lace is at the bottom. I know that's probably really hard to see, so I'm just going to hold it up this way. I love the look of the lace. It makes little points at the end, so you can see there's one finished repeat, and then I'm halfway through the next repeat. So you're going to make these until you're ready to turn it and stitch it together, which I've read how to do it, not the how to stitch it, but how, how you're going to line the pieces up, but my brain hasn't wrapped around it. I'll have to wait until I'm actually holding it, the spatial part of my brain. I know there's something that's going to be a little bit different. I'm slightly not confused. I, I know it's going to work fine and easily, but I'm not seeing it with what I'm knitting, how I'm going to be attaching it. That's fine. I'll see it later. Now, my knitting does not look like this when I'm knitting it at all. Lace typically looks doesn't look good till you block it. So I did put it on my ironing, um, no, actually on some three little blocking mats, pinned it and just steamed it so that it would hold in place and I could get a feeling and also show you what that lace looked like. But it's going to be this way. It's going to hang down. Maybe you can tell then from the picture after looking at mine. It's going to have those little teeth and there's the lace part. And then the, that's garter stitch. There's also, this looks way less aggressively blocked than mine or their gauge is much tighter. I didn't pay attention to the gauge. I'm using a size four needle, which is what was recommended for this size. And I am going to block it out like that because I love the way that looks. This line here is not an error. It's the between the repeats line. So that shawl has a ways to go, but I've, I'm in a rhythm with uh, already even just one and a half repeats in. I know, actually after one repeat, I know what to do each time. So there's very little looking at the pattern necessary. And what else? I actually, oh, the other thing I'm working on would be my Northeasterly blanket. I showed this the last time. This is a blanket that I'm knitting for a Harry Potter blanket knit along. It's occurring in both the Adelaide Cottage uh, Ravelry group along with her, uh, Shauna's, it's called Adelaide, Adelaide Cottage, her podcast, and also Vegan Jelly, who is the knitting broomstick. And they are running this together. The idea is you use at least 300 grams of Harry Potter themed yarn or a Harry Potter themed pattern and I'm doing the Northeasterly pattern and I have a lot of Harry Potter yarn so inspired yarn. I am holding two strands of fingering weight together making a, a DK weight. This is my main color. This is from Adelaide Cottage. It's on her toasty sock base. It's 
titled colorway named Mrs. Norris. It's an 80% merino nylon wool. It has that uh, nice twist to it. I had two skeins of this, which is why I decided to use it to hold it double. And I frankly don't know what I was thinking, how that was going to be enough. It just seemed like holding it doubled, it was just going to go on forever and ever and ever, which is not the case. This is the first skein, what's left of it. This is the second skein, and that's it. That's not going to make a blanket. So I, I'm always hesitant to do this, and, and really never do, but I was looking at at the Adelaide Cottage website with her yarn, and I did see that she had custom order section, and I thought, okay, uh, I don't like to trouble people to do special orders, but since she put it on there, I thought I would just ask, and she said yes, she would go ahead and dye some up for me, not right away, but I don't need it right away. I still have, I haven't even started this skein. So I will get that and have hopefully then enough to finish the blanket. The other color that I'm using is I have wound these magic cakes of all the little minis. And here are two of magic cakes and here is the third one. So I don't really have a lot of ends to weave in. There will be some, but not that many. I am knitting this with a set of double point needles. I ended up getting some high high sharps. Usually high high sharps are too sharp for me and it doesn't have to do with the knitting but if there's a lot of purling, something about the way I purl, I'll end up cut, um, digging a, I think it's this finger, gets a hole, <laughs> a literal hole. But there's just knitting in this, so it's not a problem without having the purling. And, and there's several times I need to knit through the back loop and do different things. So the, the sharper the needle and the fact that I have two strands is different for me. It's the first time I've ever knit with two strands. And just to grab them, get them pulled all the way through being two separate strands, these really sharp needles have helped. So that's what I, I'm using. I have done two full sections, I guess. And I didn't make them super long. I'm not making this a huge blanket. I think it's about 58 inches from this end to this end. And you see the colors just changed themselves. I put not always the same amount of yarn as I was making the magic cake. I might do 11 grams and then eight of the next color and 12 of the next, just all depended. And right now I don't remember what any of them are. I finished a second strip. So I have two strips and I have started the third strip. The pattern does tell you about how many strips you'd need for different size blankets. I really don't remember what it said. I'm going to do it until I run out of yarn and see how big it is. If it's not big enough, I'll figure out what I'm going to do from there. This is a, a you can memorize the pattern, so that's really nice. It's it, you, Doing it with this doubled yarn, it grows fairly fast. I think I'd rather be doing it with just a single strand because it's harder on my hands to to do the two strands. And I guess it's close to a DK weight. I've made a few little mistakes, but I don't think it's going to be anything that I've not ripped it out. I think once it's it's a blanket, it it'll, I'll block it. What I've done is every once in a while I've noticed well, that seems a little thin, and I don't have the right number of stitches on there because I wasn't counting. I just forgot to do an increase, or I think probably I forgot to do an, uh, an increase and didn't realize it until all of a sudden I counted and went, uh-oh. But I just left it because, you know what? I make mistakes, and it's a blanket. Didn't really want to rip it out. So I didn't... So that, that is my blanket, and I think that's all that I'm working on, but the Desert Mr. Dye Works sock thing 
I will cast on a new sock on Monday, I think is April 1st. You do one per month. This is the label for that. The colorway is called Dahlias, and it is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Sock weight, it's in the Viso, I guess that's how you say it, base. Self-striping yarn, as I said. And he, I did go ahead and cake up the, the yarns. You can see all those bright, pretty Dahlia colors. It has a green mini that I ordered with. It came as a set. So I'm going to do contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes and see if I can remember to do a pattern on this sock. I planned it on the last two socks and then I just get knitting and all of a sudden realize, uh, you're just knitting. You didn't even bother to do the pattern. I'm going to be doing, I'll tell you when I start it because Maybe I'll do the same thing. Totally forget I'm going to do a pattern on these like I've been doing. That's about it for things I have finished and working on and plan to start pretty soon. Guess it's time for us to move on to the fiber-related children's literature book, and I think I left it over there. So I will pause here and get right back. Today's book is a book that's been around for a long time. It's called Charlie Needs a Cloak by Tommy DePaola. This is a very simple book that goes through the process of creating a woven fabric from wool. And it of course has illustrations that you'll recognize from any other book, but you'll see here how large the text is and on a white background, so very approachable for early readers. It had started off on the page before this. Poor Charlie, he really needed a new cloak and that's for sure. As I said, it takes you through the process of shearing the sheep, washing the wool, carding the wool, spinning the wool, drying and then dy um, I, well, dyeing the wool, threading or whatever you say for putting strands on the loom threading the loom. Is that the right term? I'm not sure. And he weaves. And he weaves it in, his wool uh, into cloth. Cuts the cloth out. Sews a cloak. So the next winter, there he is hand sewing. The next winter, he's going to be all ready with a new cloak. So as I said, very simple text. But actually, that's a nice way if you were trying to teach this process. Or, and then maybe you can go back and do a page at a time and do the process. This would be, I think, fun to do with children uh, if you had the availability of all those materials, particularly the sheep. But you could start at any place. If you don't have the sheep, you can purchase the there. I totally lose my words when I'm talking here. I usually know them, but Something about talking to the camera, they just slip out of my mind. And it's also an age-related issue. Anyway, this is a great story. And it's one that um, you can find in most libraries. We've had a knit-along going on over in the In a Pickle Knitting Ravelry group. And our only existing knit-along has been the Winter Warmer knit-along. And I said that we would end it when spring came. Spring has arrived by the calendar, but this morning here in Northern Virginia, it was 24 degrees when I was outside uh, first in my car. Not very springy feeling, but it'll be, it'll be up in the 50s this afternoon, but that's quite a cool morning. Anyway, a lot of beautiful things were knit up in that knit along. We have 313 entries in the finished object thread. Just some absolutely gorgeous things. So this morning I did lock the thread, I put in the numbers 2 through 313 and random number generator from random.org selected the number 204. And this is Crowned Knitter who is Cheryl in North Carolina. So Crowned Knitter or Cheryl, if you would send me a message on Ravelry and in the subject line you could put 
cow winner, prize winner, something like that so that I, it really will catch my eye. I would like to offer as the winner of this knit along $25 in patterns on Ravelry. So that can be one pattern or a combination that come up to a total of 25. So if you will go through and find some patterns that are giftable through Ravelry, I will do that for you. So thank you so much for everyone who participated and knit so many warm, wonderful things that we don't need right now probably in most places where you might be living. Some of you might still need them for a bit, but they'll be all ready for next winter to keep you warm. I am considering starting another knit along. I have one in mind, but I do think that I'm going to wait just a short amount of time. I don't think that I will be back with you for several weeks, a, a longer period than I have been since I started. I have some things I need to get taken care of. In particular, I have a health appointment I need to go to and I get skin cancers or precancerous spots on my face and they take a something that freezes them like you might get warts frozen off they freeze these spots and most of them are on my face although there are some on my arms and legs as well but when they do that it takes my skin quite a while I'll, I'll have a bunch of scabby spot things on my face and it's not very attractive and I'm very self-conscious about them but I have to get it done and it typically takes one, I don't have an appointment for two weeks, and then it takes sometimes even longer for them, uh, four or five weeks for them to heal. So I know that I'm not going to be back until that's over with, and I will miss meeting and chatting with you. I will still try to post on Instagram, and I might even be able to do some tutorials where I'm not featured, my face isn't featured in it. So that might be a time for me to finally film some of those tutorials I've been planning, but I didn't want anybody out there to be wondering or, you know, what the heck had happened and why I wasn't there. It's not intentional. I still will be knitting. I will post things, as I said, on Instagram as I finish them, if, unless I just want to save them for another podcast. I'm going to go ahead and end here with you now, but there will be following one more segment, and that is the No One Asked Me segment. I thought that today I would... No one asked me, but I thought I would share with you if you care to stay tuned towards the end here, what I have in some of my notions pouches. I'm probably going to be filming that a little bit later on today and tacking it on to the end here. So if there's a change in lighting and, and all of that, it's because it's at a different time. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening, and I appreciate so much that you um, the nice comments that you make and thank you again so much. I hope that I'll see you sooner than I think I will, but if it's a while, I'll be back with you sometime. Bye. When it comes to what I've got in my notions pouch, it depends on the size of the pouch. This is actually a basket that I keep downstairs where I knit that has a variety of things in it that I should be able to grab at a moment's Notice, so some of the things in here be a needle gauge and also the gauge checker. Although I also might use a large one depending on what I'm knitting. I like to keep some waste yarn in any um, pouch that will fit it. Scissors are absolutely required and I have this great scissors pouch with scissors in it and tapestry needle and some light bulb stitch markers or progress keepers and this is from craft house magic i have two of these and i adore them i always like to have some tissues they don't fit in everything but if they fit i put some tissues and i need an extra pair of glasses even though my prescription glasses have the same lens the these readers tend to work better for me. I like to have some hand lotion. I notice my hands are, I'm, I have dry skin anyway, and when I'm knitting, I just seem to notice that they're drier. So I have different kinds. This is a lotion bar from uh, Mountain Goat Love Plus Leche in a little tin. Anytime 
I'm setting up a notions pouch. I really like to have a pad of paper and a pencil or a pen because I do take notes while I'm working. I lose them, but I take the notes. It's handy to have a little pocket scale. I only have one pocket scale and one regular size scale, but this one's nice to have close by. Something to store needles in or a project that's on the project. If you're doing Magic Loop, this one works really well. A little container that has a variety of different tapestry needles that I might, might need while I'm working. I like to have a chapstick or lip balm nearby and a cough drop. And a measuring tape is handy. I can't go anywhere without eye drops. It's great to have row counter, some stitch markers, and also these little things to put on the end of your needles to keep your project from coming off. Stitch holder, cable needles, and the one thing I'd never be without in any pouch this little crochet hook that has the pointed end that helps you pick up stitches that you've dropped. Can't live without that. That's probably the first thing I'd put in any Notions pouch. So that's what I have in the one that sits up on a shelf nearby where I'm working. Right nearby those are also some progress keepers and stitch markers. I like these especially for working on shawls. Let's go to the smallest one. My smallest notions pouch is this little metal box that was a gift from the SSK knitting retreat I went to last summer. This is so handy and I love it because it's small, so compact. I may have added and taken things out of this from what was, it was full of things from the retreat. Some of the things I changed. Here is a great little pair of snips. They're so tiny come in so handy. On the top of this tin is a magnet, so that holds my tapestry needle and some of these mag uh, metal stitch holders. I have a tape measure. This came in a, with, along with a knitting magazine. I just can't resist things like that. I have a pencil, my eye drops, some gum, my cough drop, as I said I need those things, but of course this handy dandy tool. I have a little tablet, my lip balm, the thing to keep your needles protected, and one tissue because it, this is a small one. So I fit what I could that was important into this one. Okay, let's take a look at another one that's maybe mid medium sized. This is one that is just a no, you can't borrow one. I think it was for pencils, but it was great because it had a good zipper at the top. And I've got my glasses, pencil, tissues, tape measure, a lip balm, needle, figure out the size thing, needle gauge, I don't know, eye drops. And in here, this was something I picked up at Hobby Lobby that had some other stuff in it, but I, that's my little notes, stitch holder, cough drop, scissors, whoops. This is intended for, you have two of them and they go at the end of double points, but I find it works with Magic Loop just great. Stitch markers in here, some tapestry needles, and cough drops. So there's um, one that's kind of medium size, you can grab for almost any project. And then I have one that is more specialized project for knitting socks. This matches and goes along with my bag from Whimsy Stitches that I use for sock knitting. This doesn't fit in anything, but sometimes I can fit it in a bag. It's nice to have this when I'm working on socks. The reason this is different for socks is mostly this. I have two of these. One is egg shaped, the other is mushroom shaped. And I use these when I am weaving in ends, like after you kitchenered the toe or heel on a sock or weaving in ends, any place in the sock, it's nice to be able to get a firm surface behind it. And otherwise, the stuff is pretty much the same. A little pair of scissors, 
pen and pencil, a tiny gauge checker, tapestry needles, just pretty much the same, you know, basic things that I'm going to usually need. Definitely some of these little stitch markers will be in every project bag because they're so great, especially if you find you've dropped a stitch, you can grab the stitch and, and keep working if you're not at home. So those are some of the things that um, you might find in an Ocean's pouch. I have several more and I might customize them like this one for a particular project, something that I'm needing. But for the most part, this is, this is a different kind of row counter. Sometimes I use with socks if I'm doing a pattern, I may need that. So I hope that you have fun with putting together your Notions pouches and maybe you keep something different. Let me know if you have an idea, suggestion for something else that needs to go in a Notions pouch. Thanks again for watching. Bye.